Hibernate's query plan cache speeds up the preparation of your queries. That reduces their overall execution time and improves the performance of your application. In the test scenario of this video, it improved the performance of the query preparation by up to 500%. To make it even better, Hibernate does all of that automatically. The only thing you should do is making sure that the cache has the right size. I will show you how to do that in this video. Hi, I'm Torben Janssen with another video showing you how to build incredibly efficient persistence layers with Hibernate and Spring. Subscribe and click the bell to get new videos every week. And also don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. This shows me that I should create more videos like this one and it helps me reach more people with it. Let's quickly discuss why Hibernate uses such a query plan cache before working on its configuration and monitoring. Hibernate has to prepare a query before it can execute it. If it's a JPQL or Criteria query, Hibernate generates an abstract syntax tree, identifies bind parameters and return types, and generates an SQL statement. This is often called compiling a query. For native queries, Hibernate only extracts some metadata, like used bind parameters, and the return type of the query. All of this takes time and resources. Hibernate's query plan cache optimizes this process by caching the plans of previously executed queries. Every time you create and execute a new query, Hibernate first checks if the cache already contains a plan for it. If not, it compiles the query and adds the plan to the cache. By default, the cache is active and stores up to 2048 query plans. This is sufficient to cache the plans of all queries executed by a lot of applications. But it might be too small for huge enterprise applications. In that case, Hibernate has to compile the plan of a query, remove another plan from the cache, and add the new one. That slows down the execution of your query. You can adjust the size of the query plan cache by setting the property hibernate.query.planCacheMaxSize in your persistence.xml file. As mentioned earlier, Hibernate only stores metadata about native query in its cache. You can customize the size of that part of the query plan cache by configuring the property hibernate.query.planParameterMetadataMaxSize. By default, it's set to 128. Before you start changing the size of your caches, you should first check if it needs to be adjusted. Since Hibernate 5.4, you can easily do that using Hibernate's statistics component. In addition to the log messages that provide you an overview of the performed operations, it also exposes more fine-grained information via its API. The number of hits and misses on the query plan cache are two of the provided metrics. Before you can access these metrics, you need to activate Hibernate statistics. You can do that by setting the property hibernate.generateStatistics in your persistence.xml to true or by providing it as a system property. After you did that, you can call the getStatistics method on Hibernate Session Factory to get a statistics interface. It provides two getter methods to get the number of hits and misses. Here you can see a test case that executes two queries 1,000 times. After that, it prints out the tracked queries and their number of hits and misses on the query plan cache. When you execute this test case, you can see in the log output that the preparation of 2,000 queries caused two misses and 3,998 hits on the query plan cache. The two misses happened when Hibernate prepared each query for the first time. After that, each request to the cache returned the plan and was tracked as a hit. One thing to point out here is that the number of hits and misses adds up to 4,000. That's twice as much as the number of executed queries. If you look into Hibernate's code, you can see that it accesses the cache twice for each query. One request to get the parameter metadata and another request to get the result type. The performance improvements provided by Hibernate's query plan cache depend on the type of query you are executing. For JPQL and criteria queries, Hibernate parses the statement, determines metadata on parameters and return types, creates an abstract syntax tree, and generates the statement. That is a complex and resource-consuming process that highly benefits from caching. As mentioned earlier, Hibernate doesn't compile native queries and only caches their metadata. 
Due to that, the performance benefit for native queries is lower than for JPQL or criteria queries. Let's have a closer look at that. Let's use the default configuration, rerun the same test as before, and measure how long it takes to prepare 2000 JPQL queries. You can see in the log output that it took Hibernate this long to prepare the 2000 queries. That changes when we change the properties hibernate.query.plantcache max size and hibernate.query.plant per meter metadata max size to 1 and rerun the test case. This time, Hibernate spent much more time preparing the queries. It also tracked 2000 hits and 2000 misses on the query plan cache. As mentioned earlier, during each preparation, Hibernate accesses the cache twice. Because I set the plan cache max size to 1, the first of these two requests always fails. This forces Hibernate to prepare the query plan and put it into the cache. The second request then finds it there and gets tracked as a hit. If we compare the time measured during both test runs, it becomes evident that the preparation of a query only takes up a small fraction of its overall execution time. But it's something we can easily improve. In my test case, a query plan cache that was big enough to contain the plans of all queries was about five times faster than a cache that forced Hibernate to compile a new plan for each query. Considering the small effort it takes to configure the cache, this is a performance improvement you shouldn't miss out on. Let's perform a similar test with a native SQL query instead of a JPQL query and execute it using Hibernate's default configuration. The preparation of the 2000 native queries using the default configuration took this long. Let's now change the properties hibernate.query.plantcache-max-size and hibernate.query.plant-per-meter-metadata-max-size to 1 and rerun the test case. Because the cache stores less information about native queries, the performance benefits of native SQL queries are smaller than for JPQL or criteria queries. This time, the preparation of the 2000 native queries took about one and a half times as long as with a correctly sized query plan cache. Hibernate has to prepare a query before it can execute it. Even though this is a fast operation compared to the execution of the query, the preparation consumes resources and time. To avoid this overhead, Hibernate stores the plan of a prepared query in the query plan cache. You can monitor the hits and misses on the cache using Hibernate's statistics component. After activating that component in your configuration, it collects metrics on all performed operations. You can access the metrics via the statistics interface. The query plan cache is activated by default and can store up to 2048 plans and the metadata of up to 128 parameters. These defaults are a good fit for most applications but might be too small for huge enterprise applications. You can adjust them by setting the properties hibernate.query.plantcache-max-size and hibernate.query.plant-per-meter-metadata-max-size in your persistence.xml file. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to learn more about Hibernate, you should join the free member library. It gives you free access to lots of member-only content, like cheat sheets and ebooks about defining efficient mappings and the best ways to query your data. I add the link to it to the video description below. And if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. Bye.